Hey, look, Mum, no computer here. This is episode two of building a modular synthesizer from the ground up. Following on from the last video, which was building a modular synthesizer case and power supply so you could put all the modules that you build into it and have it all working. The next logical step is building a VCO which is a voltage controlled oscillator. So I've done a couple of videos on something called the super simple oscillator, which is basically an oscillator made out of very simple things so you can get buzzing right away. But I've had a lot of people asking, how can you turn the super simple oscillator into something that will buzz in definite musical notes and you know, just be all around a very usable thing to make music out of? The sad news is it's gonna get very complicated very quickly using that kind of design. So we've got to try something a little bit different. So this is a video about making a simple, proper oscillator. So to start with, what does the super simple oscillator lack that we need to make this work? Oscillators in analog synths take voltages into their input which tells them which frequency to play at. In musical terms you're able to get a definite musical note depending what voltage you put into that circuit. And this voltage can come from a keyboard that sends out definite voltages for each key so you can get a definite note or it can come out of a sequencer or something. Synthesizer oscillators usually adhere to a standard called one volt per octave, which means one volt correlates to a whole octave range. Oh yeah, I've just realized I got, I cut my finger and I, I haven't got any plaster, so I had to put uh, insulation tape on it. But shh. Every musical octave has 12 notes. So you divide one volt by 12, and that means you have these 12 little chunks within that volt that correlate to those 12 notes in the scale chromatic scale thing. So you need kind of complex circuits to scale this. Luckily, back in the early 80s, there was a chip that was designed to do all of this all in a little silicon blob. It's called the Curtis CEM3340, and it was designed to sort of simplify the manufacturing process of mass-produced synthesizers. And it was very popular indeed. A lot of synthesizers used this, including the Roland SH-101, as well as the massive monster that is the Prophet 5. It's definitely a serious chip, and it was reissued in 2016, so you can actually buy it. So I sat down and worked out the simplest way you could make this voltage-controlled oscillator on a chip, buzz, basically. And this is what I got. Q schematic. Lovely. Today, we're gonna make this on stripboard. So if you want, you can deviate from the design and just, you know, go crazy with it. So here's the stripboard layout. Lovely. Like I said, this is a very simple way of making it work. It's only got one control voltage input at the minute, a coarse tune and two waveform outputs, which is a triangle and a sawtooth. This video is only to make the core of the module. I'm planning on making some expansion parts on it, hence why there's loads of free space in the stripboard. So later on in time, we'll be adding square wave output with pulse width modulation, uh, some octave selects, FM input, sync, oh, all the stuff. So you can choose what you want to put in your oscillator. But anyway, enough spiel, down to the real deal. I'm meaning let's just get it built. Come on. So these are all the parts that we need to build it. There's a trim pot, there's a potentiometer, which is the twisty knob bit. There's a couple of sockets for both of the chips that go onto the strip board. A couple of mounting sockets, few resistors, a couple of capacitors. There's a CEM3340 VCO in a chip. There's a TLO72 op amp. And this merely means that if you plug it into random things, this kind of like conditions the outputs. There's some strip board. There's a little connector to connect it to the power supply in the synthesizer case. There's a couple of jack sockets and some wire. Oh yeah, and I forgot, I'm gonna use this 20 centimeter by 10 centimeter panel to put it all behind. Okay, so let's begin with some Sharpie and then get the pilot holes going and then go for a big drill bit so you can fit all those bits in that panel. And then looking lovely, remove that and then start sanding it down so it'll take the paint bar when you spray it. Look at that and then leave it to dry for another time. Okay, now it's time to go over to the strip board. So we print out the strip board layout and then get a Sharpie and put dots where all the parts need to go. Start with the big bits. I'm starting with the IC socket. So I'm splitting the bottom of it with a drill bit so the electricity don't go to the other side of the IC socket. And now you're gonna saw 
Conundrum down with a bit of molten solder. Lovely jubbly. And then we're going to put the trim pot in. So you get a sharpie down, know where it is, and then start soldering again. And now you're going to just keep on working away. Start with maybe the jumper cables because they're nice and long. And you get those and you keep on just working through and through and through. And then you keep on getting smaller and smaller until you get to the resistors and the capacitors and all those things. Uh oh, I don't know how it's happened, but for some reason, the files from this point to another point, which I will not say about yet, have been corrupted. I don't know how that happened. I tried retrieving them using different methods and they're gone. Lost beyond recognition. So I'm going to try and explain the next few steps in a different way, I guess. So along comes the strip board minus on business. Doop -a -doo. Oh, what a lovely day. I just say, I think I might have a little nap. Boom. And it lays down. And along comes some rowdy resistors. And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, have you seen that? Oh, yeah. And then they jump in and it's like, ah. And you kind of repeat what the uh, wires were doing and you follow the strip board and soon enough you'll have all the components in there. And then after that you've got to like put the wires in and all that jizz jazz. But it's really sad but the only bit you missed was 15 minutes of like soldering in the resistors and the wires to the potentiometers. It's kind of a shame. You'll work it out I'm sure. And yeah when you finish the circuit you just got to put it all into the panel and screw it all on and then put the knob on the boom. So there we go. That's a very simple proper option oscillator that you can use and make music out of. So let's see if this actually works. I haven't even tested this or the strip board layout, but I'm pretty sure it should work, but I might be wrong. So the next step is to plug it in and then we need to tune it using this preset potentiometer on the back. Oh, oh that's good. There's no smoke. It hasn't turned off anything. Okay, so I've plugged it in. It's not turned off. There's no smoke or pops and bangs. So now it's time to plug it into the speakers and see if it makes any noise. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh, oh it works. So that's a nice soft triangle wave. What about a little bit more of a harsh saw wave? works so the next thing we need to do is we need to unplug it because I forgot we have to tune it so to tune this so it is actually one volt per octave I'm gonna use this beat step pro I'm gonna use this beat step pro because this fires out one volts per octave so I'm literally just gonna make a sequence that kind of bounces between all of the C octaves and then keep on doing it by ear until they're all pretty much you know, an octave apart. If you can't do that by ear, maybe use a tuner or something. If you don't actually have anything that fires out volt per octave, well, the question is, do you really need to tune it? I mean, if you haven't got anything that is volt per octave, do you need to tune it to volt per octave? No, just tune it to whatever you think it sounds best. So pitch out, I'm gonna plug that into the CV of this. If I play the notes, it should sound a bit out of tune because it isn't tuned. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to kind of like make a sequence that should be in tune. And then I'm going to do it by ear until it's sort of in tune. It isn't the best way to tune it. However, if it sounds right, then it is right. That should do. People usually only play within like four octaves worth of like notes. So like if you're gonna be playing more of a range, then maybe spend a bit more time doing it. But for now, this should do. Like So what I've done now is I've swapped this triple oscillator with this single oscillator with this built and that's going into a filter and it's going into a couple of other things just like a normal synthesizer will be and yeah just listen, listen to it. So 
there we go, that's the oscillator we just built plugged in to other parts to make a proper synthesizer voice. It's the beginning of your own DIY synthesizer. This right here is the prototype for this series. It's actually got three of these oscillators in there with a few more like functions and stuff which I'm going to write out so you can build. It's also got two different types of filters. The great thing about this is it's exactly the same as this times three with a few more functions. I actually use this on tour live. I played a gig last weekend and this was staying in tune and stuff. But let's have a quick listen to this before we finish it all. Sweet! So there we go, that's how you build your very first proper oscillator. Like I said, I'm going to be working for add-ons on this module like pulse width modulation, octaves, all that jizz jazz, and you won't have to modify the actual circuit you've already built, hence why there's so much space on the strip board. I'm going to be working on these add-ons over the next month, so you won't see this video for another month or so. However, I'm going to be sharing the strip board layouts for all of these different add-ons on the Patreon as and when I create them. There's more information on this project over at lookmumnocomputer.com, so you can kind of follow this video and the notes on there and hopefully yours will work too. I'm going to be giving away five of these component packs which has got everything in there to build this circuit up to the panel because I don't know what you're going to build in the panel and whatnot. So if you want these, I'm going to be giving five of these away on the Patreon as well as this modular Furby I built in a live stream a week ago. So if you're interested in those, go and check that out too. And yeah, I've been Look Mum No Computer. Don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it. In the last video of the Just Make It series, I asked people if they wanted me to put any of their stickers onto my case. So thank you very much for the overwhelming amount. I'm going to stick them on there and I'm going to do a little bit of a video for them all and see if you could spot your sticker on there. So thanks very much. <laughs>